Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we have updates on Elon Musk's possible margin loan to potentially acquire Twitter, news on a court case regarding the going private funding secure tweet, a little bit of news on China, we got actually some interesting news here in Wisconsin relating to Tesla and a couple other items as well. All right, well, you wouldn't really know it by the closing prices, but another wild day in the stock market today. The Nasdaq basically finishing flat, Tesla down 8 tenths of a percent, closing at $728 even, after trading as low as $680 per share earlier this morning. Interestingly, today was a very, very high volume day, about 46 million shares traded so far, and there will still be some more in after hours. But even with all the volatility that we have had recently, this was the highest volume day for Tesla since late January. The most recent day with higher volume was the day following Tesla's Q4 earnings report. So very interesting to see that, especially for the stock to end up pretty close to where it started the day out, although of course a lot of volatility throughout the day. From a general market perspective, the producer price index PPI was reported this morning before market open. So for April, it did increase half a percent on a month over month basis and up 11% year over year. Both of these were in line with expectations. With that being the case, we won't spend as much time on this as we did the CPI, but if we look at the chart here, we can see that the month-over-month -month change was quite a bit lower than recent trends, and year-over-year, -year, looking at the black line here, we can see that the increase for April was slightly less than the increase in March. The increase for the index for services, the lower line there, that did decline pretty significantly from March, but the year-over-year -year increase for goods, that did continue to rise, and that was the highest increase in the last 12 months. Another general thing to be aware of, Bitcoin has continued to drop over the last few days. As we have talked about, that's pushing into falling below Tesla's carrying value level. Whenever that happens, Tesla has to market impairment for that quarter's financials, so they probably are going to have a loss from Bitcoin this quarter. I'll have to spend some time doing some analysis on what the exact amount of that impairment is going to be. And of course, Tesla could offset that if they chose to or choose to sell any Bitcoin. But at these levels, it is in play for affecting the second quarter financials. All right, getting into the Tesla news, we'll start off with a quick update on Giga Shanghai. We had talked earlier this week about how Tesla had, had to pause production briefly for a parts constraint due to one of their suppliers, Aptiv, having a positive COVID test at their factory. What I've heard is that Tesla has now restarted production and has recovered their production rate to before this incident, which was likely somewhere around 1,200 vehicles per day. My best guess is that this probably delayed production of about two or 3,000 vehicles or so in total. So even if Tesla can't make that up, they've got a lot of other catching up to do, it's really not all that significant for the quarter. It'd be about 1% of production. What will be more important is when Tesla brings on that second shift and gets production back to full capacity and hopefully above prior levels. I think previously we had heard that that was supposed to happen on May 16th, so we'd be coming right up on that and we'll have to keep an eye out for any more information on that in the next few days. All right, next up, we've got an update on Elon Musk's possible margin loan for potentially acquiring Twitter. A lot of caveats there, but we know that this originally started off as a possible $12.5 billion margin commitment backed by Tesla stock. From there, we know Elon sold some Tesla and lined up some commitments for other equity investors. Then, per an updated SEC filing, that margin loan was cut in half to just over $6 billion. So, although you still get people trying to spread fear about Elon getting margin called, that pretty much eliminated that possibility when that got cut in half. But according to multiple reports today from Bloomberg, from Fortune, Elon Musk is, quote, in talks to raise enough equity and preferred financing for his proposed buyout of Twitter to eliminate the need for any margin loan linked to his Tesla shares, according to people with knowledge of the matter, end quote. They say that Musk's advisors, including Morgan Stanley, have begun soliciting interest to raise another $6 billion. So now that we know this, I think this was probably always the plan. Margin is extremely helpful for liquidity because you can access it so quickly. So in this case, instead of Elon having to go out and find firm equity commitments, he can just say, hey, I'll fund it with margin, firm up the offer, get the ball rolling, and then come back and fill in that equity later. And in this case, because the transaction actually hasn't even gone through, it's just the buying power that the margin represents that's being used to get things started, not actually using any capital, not accruing any interest, not even putting that collateral at risk, because Elon did and does have the capability to back out of the deal. Although that would potentially cost him a billion dollars, it's still not risking any of that collateral. So in regard to the Twitter deal, there are other reasons that a Tesla investor might not be supportive of that deal, primarily Elon's time and distraction, and of course the few million shares that he did end up selling, but there were also criticisms of Elon Musk putting Tesla at risk by taking this margin loan, and it seems pretty clear that those criticisms were premature, since he hadn't actually done that yet, and that doesn't seem to be the plan. I think the other takeaway from this report would be that there has been some discussion that Elon Musk might consider renegotiating or backing out of the deal just given the current market conditions. But if Elon is still seeking out other investors, it would seem like that would be a little bit less likely, at least for a complete withdrawal. 
All right, next up, we've got an update on a shareholder lawsuit against Tesla and Elon Musk for the going private funding secured tweet. A San Francisco district court has issued a summary judgment in favor of the plaintiffs that Musk knowingly made false statements during this time period. However, the court declined to make a summary judgment on whether or not the statements actually influenced Tesla's share price. Seems like an odd combination to me because the latter definitely seems a lot clearer than the former. But the court said that the evidence showed that, quote, there was nothing concrete about funding coming from the PIF, end quote, of course, referring to the Saudi Public Investment Fund. So I'm not sure exactly where things go from here. Elon's lawyer did file motions to have the court undo the decision. I'm sure this is not the last that we'll hear of it, though I wish it were. It doesn't really make sense to me why the SEC can reach a settlement agreement with Elon and Tesla on this exact same issue and collect money to be distributed to shareholders, and then shareholders can then also, for some reason, sue for the same thing. That seems kind of weird, but we'll see what happens. All right, next we've got an update on supercharging. It looks like Tesla has raised at least some pricing for supercharging in the U.S., Per a report on Reddit, Tesla has raised prices in California for off-peak up to $0.29 cents per kilowatt hour from 24 previously, and for peak from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. up to $0.58 cents per kilowatt hour from 48 previously. So about 20% price increases there, and obviously this is going to vary by region, but there have been reports of increases in regions like Delaware and Maryland, other states as well. So definitely disappointing for customers. I'm sure Tesla just reacting to rising costs and at least unlike gasoline vehicles, you do have other options for charging in many or most circumstances. All right, next we've got an update that I am happy to report on. This is a local one for me for Wisconsin. Tesla has historically not been able to deliver vehicles in the state. I had to pick my Model 3 up in Illinois, but now Tesla has actually started doing deliveries in Madison. They've found a loophole where as long as third-party financing is used, so not through Tesla, and as long as all of the transaction items are completed before delivery, so electronic signatures versus actually signing in ink at delivery, Tesla can go ahead and deliver these vehicles in the state. It is completely legal, and for Wisconsin to stop that, they would have to introduce or change a law. Obviously, could happen, but hopefully not. So Tesla doing deliveries now in Madison. They're kind of testing the process out, and then apparently next quarter, they'll start doing this in Milwaukee as well. So I'm excited to find that out. Should make things a little bit easier in Wisconsin. The downside here is that if a customer completes this transaction ahead of time and then they don't want to accept delivery, because the transaction has basically already done, they don't have the option to reject delivery like they might in other cases. But obviously, rejection is pretty rare, and I'm sure that rate is declining over time. And of course, in most cases, Tesla is going to be able to fix whatever issue there is, so shouldn't be too big of a deal. All right, last item for today then is just a quick piece of news on SpaceX. Earlier this week, Quebec announced funding of $50 million for the deployment of Starlink services for high-speed internet connections for just over 10,000 remote households in the area. So great for those customers to have connectivity, great for SpaceX to have those customers, and great for Quebec to be able to accomplish that in a relatively financially efficient way. All right, that is it for today then. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you're subscribed and signed up for notifications. You can also find me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And we'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, May 13th episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.